Hello, I'm Kurt and this is Simple Shop Creations. And in this video here, we're going to assemble or attach the online controller to the base frame of the Toro laser here. So what came in the kit was um, instructions down here at the bottom. It has other instructions for other things. We have an RJ11 cord, an old telephone cord. We have a bracket that will go sit right here. And then on top of this bracket, we have this base plate here. that will go right on there. Also, we have the online controller. And then we have five screws, a larger screw here. That's the same size as this one. And then four smaller screws to screw this plate onto that bracket. Now, looking at the angle of this, I'm going to put this on first before I put this on like this. If you look at the instructions, from the instructions point of view, it looks like they want you to attach the holder to this plate and then attach it to the laser frame itself. But if you can see that angle there, it might be a little tough to get a screwdriver in there. So I'm gonna reverse this where I'm gonna put this on and put this on first here, and then I'll screw this on to that. I'm going to just remove this one screw here and then slide that plate on underneath this. I just noticed there's no T-nut for the other side here. Let's see if this thing screws in anyway. So I was going to spread these out a little bit. I was going to lift it up. Maybe I should just remove it, but stuff looks a little delicate. All right, it tightens up. Let's move this thing out of the way. Yep, it tightens up. No need to have another T-nut underneath there. If you look at it, this bottom plate hole seems to be a little bit narrower than this top plate here. So looks like it locks in. So it's in, in good and tight. So now we're going to put, oops, <laughs> it fell off. What happened here? Ah. Hmm. Be right back. I had to get a needle nose. So my red wire came off and I'm going to bend the tab here. Let's get a close up of this. Can you see that? Let's see here. I'm going to bend this tab here out a little bit, and then I'm going to run the wire, the red wire, on this side of the control of the bracket. All right, let's take a look at that. <clears throat> so you can see here. Whoops. Sorry about that. I ran it on the outside here. And let the black one on the other side. Let's zoom in there a little bit and see if we can see it a little better. So there you have it. So let me zoom back out. All right, so now let's put this plate on. Now we got small little screws here. Screws here, which I'm probably going to drop. We'll see how frustrated I get by trying to keep those uh, lined up here. No one's going to put that. Ugh. Oh, there we go. Ready for my hand to get in the way? Get my hand in the way. Hi, I'm dumbing over the original sound in the video because I want to mention a couple things. The first thing is I'm always using the term online controller. It's actually called an offline controller. So therefore, just ignore online and just think offline controller. Now, the other item I want to mention is if you have the z-axis modification like I do and it did not come with the extension plate then you had to physically move the bracket the limit switch bracket back towards the other x-rail a couple centimeters or like a half an inch this pushes the whole offline controller mount further towards the x-rail on the motherboard there and as you can see in the image or the video the offline controller base plate does 
rub up against the white connector there and also the top two wires are drastically bent therefore if you have the z-axis modification i would recommend not using the offline controller bracket and mounting plate and just put the controller on its side now i did email or tour about the z axis i mean the y axis extension plate that you can see here in the pdf that came with my offline controller as you see there the z axis from a tour does should include a y axis extension plate mine did not i emailed them and now i'm just waiting for them to come back and see when not they'll send that out to me so with that let's continue on with the rest of the video Well, let's just put the controller on. Now you see here on the controller, you got a Type-C, you got a slot for your uh, SD card. And then down here, you have where your RJ11 cable goes in. That just slides in like that. These ends are the same. So pretty much a straight through. And let me back this out a little bit. This thing goes right there where it says online controller. Now let's go ahead and turn this on and see what it does. Okay, so you you all probably thought that I was going to go start messing around with the online controller. My computer screen. So, in addition to all the parts that came with the online controller, a USB drive came with it, and that's what you're seeing right here. It's this USB drive, and let's see what's on the USB drive. Right here... Looks like it's all zipped up here. So what we have here. So we have a test file. Let's see what this test file is. Looks like a gerbil. Yeah, it's opening up my gerbil. So that's a test file. Let's go into manuals. Work our way down. So this looks like it's going to be the, yeah, the laser manual itself. Back up one. So what drivers we have again. This is probably the drivers for the laser and not the online controller. Let's open this up. Oh, look at that! Perfect English. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect English. These uh, zip files are real quick. Serial readme, let's see. Open. Ah. Uh. Go back here. So we went into the drivers. Let's see what this is written. Oh, that's better. Look at this one. Again, this probably has nothing to do with the online controller. Let's go back to the Pro Media here and let's go to the software. This is the laser, laser gerbil.
Let's go back to this. Maybe. Firmware. Let's look at the tips. Spelt close wrong. The panel. Then go back here. Examples. Ooh. Oh. We have some example files here. Let's open one of these up and see. You can see I use a oh Iron Man. This is a JPEG. Let's see what these unmarked ones are. I mean, looks like a transformer. Let's open this. Oh, went on my other screen here. Let's bring it over here. Maybe. Oh boy. There we go. Not right now. Oh, look at that. Starbucks. <laughs> uh, you can see I have no laser connected here. This is on my desktop. Let's see what this one is. Oh, let's look at that. Hmm. Tour power test backup. Uh, oh, we got another director here in perfect English. Huh. Let's do uh, view. Get away from detail. There we go. Let's go. Let's do medium icons. Huh. What's this? It's a JPEG. Let's open up this one. Huh. What about this one? All right. So that's what's in that. Let's go back here. Go back one. So I guess that's all. All the files are on the USB drive. All right. So my opinion on the offline controller is that it's not ready for prime time. Now before. Before we switched over to TD screen sessions here, I was messing around with the online controller. I don't find it very intuitive. Uh, I was moving around. In the offline controller, I was able to home my laser back to the home position. I was able to move it, limit it, move it up and up and down the y-axis, but I constantly get, or was constantly receiving across the screen here, a verbal disconnect message. Now. I do not know if this, if I have the latest software. I did did send an email to Otor asking that question, as you can see from here. Simply put, does the unit ship with the latest firmware already installed? If not, what release firmware is the latest? And if it's on the USB stick that we were reviewing prior to this screen session. Uh, the reply was basically all off on offline controllers are sent with the latest firmware. That's all I can go by right now. Now another thing I noticed here, you can see some of these icons on the top here. I was able to get into the Wi-Fi section of the offline controller. It did find the various Wi-Fi secure ID names. I was able to, I um, attempted to put in my password for one of the Wi-Fi SSIDs that I have here in my home and I was using a um, tablet or cell phone stylus and each time I would hit one of the characters to put my password in I would get a double character so I never could uh, connect to my Wi-Fi. Also looks like just going to be a Telnet session when or if they do allow some form of IP connection to this offline controller. So it would be a Telnet session, so that's totally unsecure. But then again, it's in your home network, it shouldn't really matter. Uh, you can see here there's a Bluetooth icon, which does show up. Uh, I didn't get any alarms, I just kept on getting a message pop up here in the center, a Gerbil disconnect message, so I don't know what's up with that. Again, I wish they had a uh, manual with this, 
So right now, I'm going to reiterate this, this. I would probably not purchase this at this time. I would wait. I prefer reading manuals. I mean, I can hack around in it if I want to, but I like reading the manuals from end, from start to end, and then I forget what I read and ask something in the form that's supposed to be in the manual, which I forgot I read. But that's the way it works. Now, I, I'm looking into another way to control the laser across your IP network. And right now I'm investigating, I'm just trying to get some money together before I go ahead and purchase the device that I need to see if it would work controlling the laser remotely where you're in one room and the laser is in another room. Until then, let's go back to the video and in this part of the video I am just basically hacking around on the offline controller for a few minutes here so uh, let's go back there and then you know, probably see some of the screens that I uh, were able to uh, go through on this controller here. So I just plugged it in and this thing came on right away. Alright? So all I did was plug it in and boom! Uh, that came on. I wasn't filming at the time when it did it but let's turn on the laser itself. Now let's see if it hits. All right, so the laser's on. Let's see what other stuff we have in this. So let's take this out here a little closer here. All right, I don't know, no clue about this thing here, but let's see what they have. Can you see that? All right. So it picked up the laser. Ooh, it's got Wi-Fi. Well, this shows like it's got Wi-Fi here. What's the setup? Settings. Reset system, reset, upgrade firmware, reboot. But what's firmware is on here? Uh, let's see what. Let's go to system instead. Sound, brightness, calibration. Sorry about my shakiness there, but uh, that's calibration. What else do we have here? Let's go back to sys. Reset settings, upgrade firmware, reboot. Let's see what happens when we reboot. Nothing. Let's see. Yes. Well, yeah, reboot it. All right, to set something up. Media. Oh, Telnet. Old school Telnet. Ah, it's a gerbil. Port 23, there's an IP address. Stop Telnet mode. Picked up the laser. So he says Laser Master 2 Pro. And oh, there we go. It moved. Well, there you have it. The online controller. Well, until next video, have yourself a healthy and wonderful day.